So now that the drawing is finished, uh, we're going to move into watercolor. One of the things you may notice is I've uh, angled my easel back a little bit. And what that's going to do is going to um, help slow down the drips. I will have um, paper towels handy in my right hand as I work, um, but the, uh, the steeper or the, the lower angle will help to uh, minimize drips as I'm working. So um, what I've done is I've, I've accentuated some of the, the shadows here. I've, divide, I've defined some of the images, made them a little bit more textured, a little bit more rounded. And um, now we're going to add a very light layer of watercolor. So this is um, going to be similar to a traditional watercolor technique where we go in with lights. Uh, the thing that's different from a normal watercolor technique is I already have some darks established. Uh, let's talk a little bit about what I have for colors here. So I have a, a pretty basic palette of watercolors here. And what I like to do is I like to have um, two reds, two yellows, and two blues. And I also have a neutral color um, that's going to help me out with this particular composition. So for my red, uh, these are Holbein watercolors. I, they work really well. Uh, this is Crimson Lake, which is my cool red. Uh, I have Vermilion Hue, which is going to be my warm red, very kind of orangey red. My neutral is a raw sienna, which is a kind of a dull yellow uh, earth pigment. It's going to be um, really great for some of the, um, the base of the trees and some of the, the, the forest floor. Um, my two yellows, okay, I have my warm yellow and my, and my cooler yellow, so my school bus yellow and my tennis ball yellow. Uh, the warm yellow is permanent yellow deep, the cool yellow is permanent yellow lemon, and then that brings me over to my blues. So I've got two different blues here. Um, you'll see the one that's a little bit lighter, one a little bit darker, and the lighter one is the warmer peacock blue. The darker, cooler blue is ultramarine deep. So with these colors here, I should be able to mix just about everything that I need. I have my brushes laid out here by size. So I'm starting with about a two inch brush. I've got some one inch and a three quarter inch, uh, some half inches, and then some, some round brushes for smaller, any kind of detail work. So I have all my brushes handy, ready to go. And um, what I'm gonna do is take a look at the composition and try to look at the, the big areas first. So right now I have this black and white image um, and I have all sorts of different zones that are gonna need some color. And what I wanna do is I wanna sort of carp compartmentalize those colors a little bit and think about where I can put um, a very light layer of watercolor to get things started. And I'll be using the bigger brushes initially. So th one of the biggest areas I have is the forest floor here. What I like to do is I like to start with kind of a, a reddish, a warm reddish color. I'm going to take this big uh, two inch wash brush and I'll get both of my reds in here. It'll give me something in the middle, so it's not going to be too cool or too warm. And I want to neutralize that, so I'm going to pull in a little bit of my raw sienna. I can also add a touch of the peacock. No, that's going to be, it's going to change it dramatically, so I just want a little at a time. Keep uh, a lot of water in my mixture. And if I thin the, the paint out a little bit, I can see a little bit more. Um, it's going to be a better indication of what it looks like on the paper. And you can just put a little bit somewhere and see if you, if you like the color. I'd actually like that to be a little warmer, so I'll pull in some, a little bit of my warm yellow there. If you get too much, you can just sort of blot it a little bit. Now, you'll see in some of these cases where I've mixed the color um, you know, not completely, so I'll have little variations, and that's really what I like to see. 
um, on this big wide brush. I have some places where it's a little cooler, a little bit warmer, and that's going to add some interest to the painting. So now I'm going to put a little bit of, uh, I have all this nice foliage over here, and uh, I'm going to start with a very pale yellow-green. So I'm going to use my permanent yellow lemon. I've got a little bit of uh, the red still on my brush, but that's not going to cause too many problems. So I'm putting my peacock over here. I know the peacock is a lot stronger than the yellow. So I'll just bring it in. Look at some foliage back here we can put in. And you'll notice I'm not being too specific. Um, I was very specific with my line work. But with the washes, uh, I'm kind of dropping them in a little bit more randomly. It's, it's uh, fun and relaxing. Shouldn't be stressful. 